Hello and welcome to a quick overview of constraint shorthand notation. ClearCheck uses a new concept for defining constraints and goals called constraint shorthand notation. This notation makes adding constraints in ClearCheck fast and easy. ClearCheck has a wide variety of constraint types, each with their own specific shorthand. This video will give you a broad overview of constraint shorthand notation in ClearCheck. For the most part, constraint types in ClearCheck follow this basic pattern for typing in constraint shorthand notation. Step 1. Add the shorthand description of the constraint that needs to be looked up. This is always based on the constraint type selected. So for example, if my constraint type is volume, the shorthand description is the letter V for volume. If the constraint type is dose, then the shorthand description is the letter D for dose. Step 2. Next comes the numerical value for the constraint value that needs to be looked up, followed by the unit. For example, if my constraint type is volume, a numerical dose value will need to be looked up. With the volume constraint type, your goal will be to keep the structure's volume of the specified dose below your constraint volume goal. So in this example, a value of relative or absolute dose will need to be typed in, followed by a unit. If it's a relative dose, it will be a percent sign for the unit. If it's an absolute dose, it will either be gray or centigray for the unit. Please note, if your eclipse units are in gray, then clear check must be in gray and dose units must be typed in as gray. If eclipse units are in centigray, then clear check must be in centigray and dose units must also be typed in centigray. Step 3. Next, we need to add a relational operator. This is a fancy way of saying add a greater than or less than symbol. Please keep in mind, ClearCheck always assumes greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Step 4. Next, we need to add a numerical goal value, followed by a unit. Again, different constraint types allow for different unit goals, and these goals can either be expressed in absolute or relative units. For example, using volume constraint, the goal can either be in percent or in cc. If only one numerical goal value is used, this sets up a pass fail only scenario. Either the goal is met, or it is not. Sometimes it is helpful to have a third state, like a condition. This is helpful if you want the first part of the goal to be a value that you are really hoping for, but not quite sure if it can be met. The second part of the goal will be set as a range. This is a range of values that you are willing to accept. The third part of the goal can be thought of as a limit, or a goal you are not willing to exceed. To set this up in your goals, start out with a numerical value that you would love to meet. Then follow this up with a dash to set the range in which you are willing to accept. This is followed by your uppermost limit that you would like to avoid, followed by the unit. In this example, the volume constraint is being used, V1000 centigrade less than 29 to 35%. So if a structure's volume at 1000 centigrade is receiving 23%, the ClearCheck software will report a pass. This is below the 29% threshold. If the structure's volume is exactly at 29% at 1000 centigrade, ClearCheck will also report a pass. Remember, ClearCheck assumes less than or equal to, and in this case, 29% is equal to 29%, so it would report a pass. If the structure's volume is 29.3% at 1000 centigrade, it will report a condition. This is because 29.3% falls between the two sets of values, 29 to 35%. If the structure's volume is 40% at 1000 centigrade, then ClearCheck will report a fail, as it is above the limit threshold. If you ever forget the constraint shorthand notation, don't worry. ClearCheck has examples in the right-hand sidebar for quick reference. If you don't see the sidebar, make sure that the sidebar is activated. Clicking here will toggle on and off the sidebar for the constraint examples. Once the sidebar is active, constraint examples will update once you change the constraint type in the dropdown. Even better, ClearCheck allows you to click on the constraint examples to get you started. Once the constraint examples is clicked on, it will automatically populate to the correct field. Now you can edit your constraint parameters quickly and efficiently. You will notice that when you input a lookup dose or a goal dose expressed as a relative percent, a bar at the top of the application shows up that reads dose constraint 100% equals blank. The ClearCheck software needs to know what the absolute dose is based on. Instead of forcing the user to type all dose lookups and dose goals in absolute dose, this is a convenient way to express doses in a more natural way. For example, you could use the max dose constraint and type max less than 110%. If the user typed dose constraint 100% equals 1000 centigrade, 
the max dose would have to be less than or equal to 1100 centigrade in the absolute form. Please note, the only time this bar will appear is if you happen to use relative doses in your constraints. If you are wishing to avoid this bar altogether, just simply express all dose values in absolute dose. In the above example, instead of typing max less than 110%, you would simply type max less than 1100 centigrade. If you happen to type something wrong in the clear check constraint area that clear check doesn't like, a red exclamation point will be displayed with a description of the problem that needs to be fixed. Please note, ClearCheck will not allow the user to save until this error is fixed. Once the error is fixed, the user can then save as normal. Still need more help? Can't remember how a constraint type works? Be sure to click on the Detailed Constraint Example link located here in the ClearCheck software for additional information and resources. ClearCheck. Efficiency through simplicity.